Hey, I'm back with another video on what you need to think about and ask about in terms of your letter of agreement or your contract with your new congregation. In the Unitarian Universalist tradition, my colleagues are being matched with congregations um, this coming weekend. I think it's crazy, or maybe, oh no, it's Thursday, the offers go out. I mean, they don't do it on Easter Sunday, but they do it close enough to Easter Sunday that it's just so it's such bad timing. But anyway, so search committees are reaching out to the ministers. They would like to have come meet the congregation as their chosen candidate, and ministers are trying to decide, you know, if I get more than one offer, who's my first pick? And all that matchmaking is going on. Shout out to Reverend Keith Crone, who's our um, director of ministerial search. Keith, 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 we need to do lunch. All right. Um, so I just want to talk about pulpit um, expectations of filling the pulpit in worship, because letters of agreement tend to say. In, in the Unitarian Universalist tradition, and everybody else is going to be very jealous when they hear this, that we have one Sunday out of the pulpit a month. I'll, okay, I'm just going to give some groaning time here. Everybody groan, get it out of your system. And yes, many Unitarian Universalists um, take much of the Sunday out. But don't come for us. We have a very creative liturgical tradition, and we are... We are the creative process and heavy lifting involved in crafting Unitarian Universalist worship is very, very big. I'm not complaining. I love it. I love it, but it's wow, it's a lot. Okay, so pulpit and worship services. This is in my letter of agreement. Again, it generally your contract or your letter will say that you're allowed to be out of the pulpit once a month, but you need to ask the folks in the church, what that means. What does that look like? Does that mean that they're okay with you vacating the premises once a month? That feels like a lot to me personally. That would I would not do that even though I, you know, obviously would love to see friends and family more. And, and, and you know, it's definitely, as you know, if you're in ministry, giving up our Sundays and it's, it's just part of our life. And our holidays, you know, the same thing. It's hard, but it is the one day a week, generally, um, in the traditional congregation. And congratulations if you've become less Sunday-centric. But for most of us, that's the time that we can interact with the entire community or a lot of the community. So just get clear on what that understanding is. Um do they expect the minister to, for instance, be part of the religious education program on the Sundays that they're out of the pulpit? Do they expect the minister to um, assist a lay team in creating worship or to participate in that? Um, you know, what, so what do they expect? What, what's their culture? You want to make sure that you're, you know what, what it is. Because if you're thinking, oh, I have a Sunday out a month and I'll be, you know, flying to wherever to, to spend time with my boyfriend or something. And they're feeling like, oh, well, you know, our minister's mostly here on Sundays. And when she's not preaching and leading the service, um, you know, she's worshiping or she's uh, teaching children or something. Okay. So just want to work that out. You also really want to talk about the history of, um, of the worship life of the church in terms of your authority and responsibility. There, um, especially in Unitarian Universalism, there are many of our congregations have a very strong history of lay-led worship or um, lay teams um, who expect to have a lot of leeway in planning and leading worship. Make sure you know what your authority is and who the major players are so that you can talk to them about their expectations so that there aren't, you know, worship wars, which are awful. And I've heard so many, so many stories about um, conflicts between ministers whose letter of agreement almost certainly will say, you know, the minister is responsible for all worship services. But in reality, we'll find that that's not true. I have mostly been very fortunate in that 
the last two con well the last three congregations I've worked with were very very clear you know you're responsible for worship even lay worship needs to be under your guidance because they all the worship needs to be quality and the bottom line is the you know the buck stops with the minister so even if you are out that Sunday you're at a conference or something and someone comes in and leads a worship service and it's terrible or the lay pre or the um, guest preacher does something really inappropriate you must deal with it that's on you so and I've had that happen um, you know and, and so that's good it's good to know what you know it's your job um, but my first ministerial setting I came in as an assistant minister to a, a large congregation where there was um, essentially like an earth-based group that wanted to do an alternative worship service and I was kind of assigned to them, really inflicted on them as their as their minister. But they really didn't they didn't they were they were they we tried to make it work, but they really were dedicated to lay led worship in a style and um, that that I didn't uh, it ended up being a very, very painful and um, divisive situation, let's just say. But part of the conflict was that I went in thinking that they were really welcoming my ministerial leadership there, and they would much rather have had just a lay-led service with maybe some ministerial support, which is very different than guidance and leadership. So just ask the important questions. Make sure you're clear on the culture and the expectations so that you can, you know, make make appropriate um, decisions and not, not kid yourself that you're coming in to, to a congregational uh, context that isn't what it is. And you should also be clear that you are responsible for all worship services, including seasonal celebrations and all rites of passage. Um, and that means that you're clear on boundaries, that people are not inviting in their officiant of choice to do their wedding unless that's a policy that you approve of. Okay, so that's just, these are things that, these are details you need to look into. Okay, so because worship and uh, worship, the worship life of the Congregation is huge. It's a huge part of your programmatic and spiritual responsibilities. So look into that in great detail and know uh, where, where all the pieces are. Okay?